The casting process for the 1957 movie, which we'll refer to as The Show, was a meticulous task. The film's director, David Lean, was determined to find the perfect cast. Alec Guinness, who played Colonel Nicholson, was not an immediate choice. Initially, Lean had considered Cary Grant for the role. However, Grant's salary expectations were too high. Guinness, on the other hand, agreed to a significant pay cut to be part of the project. His performance would later earn him an Academy Award. William Holden, cast as Shears, was a last-minute replacement. The original choice, Cary Grant, was again considered, but his salary demands proved prohibitive. Holden, who was initially reluctant, agreed after Lean personally visited him in Switzerland to discuss the role. Seshu Hayakawa, the Japanese commander Sato, was a less challenging choice. Lean had seen him in a play and was impressed by his performance. Hayakawa, a veteran actor, brought an air of authority and dignity to the role. The casting of the British soldiers was a more complex process. Lean wanted actors who could portray the physical and mental toll of their captivity. Many of the actors, including James Donald, underwent significant weight loss for their roles. The casting of the Asian characters was also a sensitive issue. Lean wanted to ensure authenticity and respect. Many of the Asian roles were played by actual Asian actors, a rarity in Hollywood at the time. The chemistry between the main cast was palpable. Guinness and Holden, despite their initial reservations, developed a strong rapport. Their contrasting personalities, Guinness's stoic discipline, and Holden's rebellious spirit created a dynamic tension. In conclusion, the casting process for the show was a careful blend of chance and design. Lean's persistence and intuition led to a stellar cast that brought the story to life. I intend to make a full report of your activities in this camp. The Bridge on the River Kwai, a 1957 movie, bears the directorial vision of David Lean. Known for his meticulous attention to detail, Lean's approach to this film was no different. His creative influences were vast, ranging from literature to his own life experiences. Lean's style is often characterized by his long shots and panoramic views, which he used to capture the vast and rugged terrain of the movie's Burmese jungle setting. Collaboration was key to Lean's directorial vision. He worked closely with his cast and crew, fostering a creative environment that allowed for innovation and exploration. For instance, Lean and his cinematographer, Jack Hildyard, spent considerable time scouting locations to find the perfect river and bridge for the film. They even went so far as to build a full-scale bridge for the film's climactic scene. Lean's collaborative approach also extended to the film's cast. He worked closely with actors Alec Guinness and William Holden, encouraging them to develop their characters and explore their motivations. Guinness, in particular, worked closely with Lean to develop the character of Colonel Nicholson even going so far as to suggest changes to the script. Lean's directorial vision was also informed by his own experiences and beliefs. The Bridge on the River Kwai explores themes of honor, duty, and the human cost of war. Lean, who had served in World War II, was deeply interested in these themes and brought a personal touch to the film's exploration of them. In bringing the Bridge on the River Kwai to life, Lean drew upon a wide range of creative influences his own life experiences, and a collaborative approach to filmmaking. The result is a film that is both visually stunning and deeply thought-provoking, a testament to Lean's enduring legacy as a director. You see, Jennings, there's certain advantages to me. The Bridge on the River Kwai, a 1957 movie, is a classic that has left a lasting impact on many. One memorable scene is when the British soldiers march across the completed bridge, singing Colonel Bodhi March, which creates a striking contrast with the harsh circumstances they're in. Did you know that this movie is based on a true story? As we delve deeper, you'll discover fascinating, shocking, and heartbreaking facts that will keep you engaged. For instance, did you know that the construction of the real bridge was even more grueling than depicted in the movie? or that the film's director, David Lean, was initially hesitant to cast Alec Guinness as Colonel Nicholson? Now, we'd love to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. The fact that the use of officers for manual labor is expressly forbidden by the Geneva Convention. The Bridge on the River Kwai, a 1957 movie, was filmed primarily in Sri Lanka, 
then known as Ceylon. The production team chose this location to replicate the Burmese jungle where the actual bridge over the River Kwai was Billy Tennant, a significant challenge faced by the crew was building the bridge. They had to construct a full-scale bridge, which was then destroyed for the film's climactic scene. This task required substantial engineering and construction work. The film also faced logistical challenges due to its remote shooting location. The crew had to transport all necessary equipment and supplies to the jungle site, which was not easy. Additionally, they had to deal with adverse weather conditions such as heavy rain and high humidity, which often disrupted filming. To overcome these challenges, the production team employed innovative techniques. They built a railway line to transport equipment and materials to the filming site. They also constructed a water treatment plant to provide clean drinking water for the cast and crew. The film set design was meticulously detailed. The production team recreated a Japanese prisoner of war camp, complete with huts, barbed wire fences, and guard towers. They also built a section of the Burma Railway, including the famous bridge, to scale. The bridge on the River Kwai is also notable for its use of color. The film cinematographer, Jack Hildyard, used a vibrant color palette to capture the lush greenery of the jungle and the rich hues of the soldiers' uniforms. In summary, the production of the bridge on the River Kwai was a significant undertaking. The film's crew faced numerous challenges, including building a full-scale bridge in a remote jungle location. However, they overcame these obstacles through innovative techniques and meticulous attention to detail, resulting in a visually stunning and critically acclaimed film. The film, set in a Japanese prisoner of war camp during World War II, tells the story of a group of British soldiers tasked with building a bridge for their captors. The movie is led by the unforgettable performance of Alec Guinness, who plays the role of Colonel Nicholson, the British officer in charge of the prisoners. Guinness delivers a nuanced portrayal of a man struggling to maintain his dignity and principles in the face of extreme adversity. The film's director, David Lean, is known for his meticulous attention to detail, and it shows in every frame of the movie. The bridge itself is a marvel of engineering, and the scenes showing its construction are both educational and captivating. The film's cinematography is also noteworthy, with sweeping shots of the Burmese jungle and the River Kwai providing a stunning backdrop to the story. The bridge on the River Kwai is not just a war movie, it's a study of the human condition and the consequences of obsession. Colonel Nicholson becomes increasingly obsessed with building the bridge, seeing it as a way to maintain his soldiers' morale and prove their worth to their captors. However, this obsession blinds him to the reality of the situation and leads to tragic consequences. The film's supporting cast is also excellent, with William Holden delivering a solid performance as an American soldier who becomes embroiled in the bridge's construction. Seshu Hayakawa is also noteworthy as the Japanese commandant of the prison camp, bringing a sense of dignity and humanity to a character that could have easily been one-dimensional. The Bridge on the River Kwai is a classic film that has stood the test of time. Its exploration of themes such as obsession, duty, and the human spirit continues to resonate with audiences today. The film's stunning visuals, memorable performances, and thought-provoking story make it a must-watch for any fan of classic cinema. Think about this. Are you quite sure you'll be able to use it in cold blood? The Bridge on the River Kwai, a 1957 movie, is renowned for its compelling score and soundtrack. Composed by Malcolm Arnold, the music beautifully complements the narrative and emotional tone of the film. Arnold's score is a symphony of emotions, mirroring the film's shifting moods. The main theme, A Rousing March, reflects the prisoner's initial spirit of defiance. As the situation deteriorates, the music turns darker, reflecting the character's despair. In an interview, Arnold revealed that the main theme was inspired by a military band he saw while serving in the army. He wanted to capture the spirit of camaraderie and resilience among the soldiers. The march became a symbol of their determination to maintain their dignity in the face of adversity. The soundtrack also includes traditional Thai music, which adds a layer of authenticity. The clash of Western and Eastern music mirrors the cultural clash in the film. The Thai music is used sparingly, but effectively, to highlight the stark contrast between the two worlds. The film's most memorable scene, 
The bridge explosion is accompanied by a dramatic crescendo in the music. The sudden shift from the triumphant march to the chaotic cacophony of sounds underscores the shock and confusion of the moment. Arnold's score was a critical success and won him the Academy Award for Best Original Score. His music not only enhances the film's narrative, but also stands alone as a powerful piece of music. It is a testament to Arnold's versatility and prowess as a composer, having created a score that resonates with audiences more than six decades later. In the movie, renowned actor Alec Guinness, who played the lead role, had a unique connection to the surname de Cuff. It was actually his mother's maiden name, and he never knew the identity of his father. Guinness's collaboration with director David Lean was most harmonious in their first two films together, with tension becoming more prevalent in their later projects. It's interesting to note that the bridge depicted in the movie is located at a different set of coordinates than the actual bridge, which is referred to as Bridge 277 and can be found on the Mi Klong River. The movie's bridge is situated in Kanchanaburi Province, Thailand, while the real bridge is in a popular tourist region. Despite the different locations, the movie bridge remains a captivating symbol of the story setting. You'll be able to get you a little something from time to time. We've bribed one of your guards. One of the most iconic scenes in the movie takes place on the bridge during its climactic explosion. The tension builds as Colonel Nicholson, played by Sir Alec Guinness, realizes the true identity of Shears, portrayed by William Holden. Simultaneously, Lieutenant Joyce, acted by Jeffrey Horn, spots a commando team led by Major Warden, played by Jack Hawkins, approaching the bridge with the intent to destroy it. Director David Lean masterfully crafts this scene, employing dramatic irony as the audience is aware of the commando team's intentions, while the characters on screen are not. The suspense is further heightened by the rhythmic sound of a train approaching the bridge, adding a ticking clock element to the scene. Guinness's performance is noteworthy as he grapples with his loyalty to his men and the bridge, ultimately deciding to blow it up. The anguish on his face is palpable, and his delivery of the line, What Have I Done?, resonates with audiences even today. The cinematography in this scene is also exceptional. The use of wide shots showcases the scale of the bridge and the surrounding landscape, while close-ups of the characters' faces capture their emotions. The explosion itself is brilliantly filmed, with the use of slow motion adding to the dramatic impact. The impact of this scene on audiences is profound. It encapsulates the themes of the movie, including the futility of war and the blurred lines between duty and morality. The scene's emotional resonance and visual spectacle have made it a classic in cinema history. In an interview, Wien stated, I wanted the audience to feel the weight of what was happening, the tragedy of it all. Guinness echoed this sentiment, saying, It's a scene that asks big questions, and I think that's what makes it so powerful. Another iconic scene in the movie is the opening sequence, which depicts the prisoners of war marching into the Japanese camp. The use of long shots and the haunting score by Malcolm Arnold create a sense of despair and hopelessness. The audience is immediately drawn into the story and the stage is set for the moral dilemmas that follow. The performance of the cast, particularly Guinness, sets the tone for the rest of the movie. His portrayal of Colonel Nicholson is both commanding and nuanced, earning him an Academy Award for Best Actor. The cinematography in this scene is also striking. The use of natural lighting and the handheld camera work give the audience a sense of being there, experiencing the prisoner's plight firsthand. The impact of this scene on audiences is significant. It establishes the movie's anti-war message and sets the stage for the complex moral issues that follow. The scene's raw emotional power and visual style have made it a standout moment in cinema history. In an interview, Guinness stated, the opening scene was crucial in setting the tone for the rest of the movie. It was important to establish the sense of hopelessness and despair that the prisoners were feeling. Overall, the iconic scenes in the movie are a testament to the power of cinema. Through masterful direction, exceptional performances, and stunning cinematography, these scenes have left a lasting impact on audiences and continue to resonate today. In the movie, a character named Shears falsely claims to be a Navy commander, which is equivalent to the rank of lieutenant colonel in other services. However, he is given the brevet rank of major, equivalent to lieutenant commander, a lower rank. 
This discrepancy causes confusion and adds to the tension in the story. The film also features Seshu Hayakawa's only Oscar-nominated performance. Hayakawa's portrayal of the strict and unyielding Colonel Sato is a standout in the movie, and his nomination is a testament to his talent and dedication to the role. Moreover, the production of the movie was not without its challenges. The production manager, Cecil F. Ford, transformed a local tea plantation house into the production unit headquarters. Located two miles from the bridge set, it consisted of one large main house and surrounding bungalows. This location served as the base of operations for the crew and added to the authenticity of the film setting. Signing off, this is your friendliest enemy, reminding you to take it easy. The bridge on the River Kwai, released in 1957, left a significant cultural and social impact. The film resonated with audiences, becoming a surprise hit and garnering critical acclaim. Its exploration of themes like honor, obedience, and survival struck a chord with post-war audiences. Influencing pop culture, the movie's iconic soundtrack by Malcolm Arnold became instantly recognizable. The catchy tune, whistled by soldiers in the film, permeated popular culture and has been used in various contexts since. Moreover, the film contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It portrayed the harsh realities of war and the psychological toll it takes on individuals, prompting viewers to reflect on the consequences of conflict. The movie also shed light on the plight of prisoners of war, particularly those forced to work on the Burma Railway during World War II. This portrayal raised awareness about the mistreatment of prisoners and fostered empathy among audiences. Furthermore, the film's depiction of Japanese soldiers was groundbreaking for its time. Instead of portraying them as one-dimensional villains, the movie presented them as complex individuals, contributing to a more nuanced understanding of the enemy. In essence, the bridge on the river Kwai resonated with audiences, influenced pop culture, and sparked discussions on significant social and cultural themes, leaving an indelible mark on cinematic history. In his childhood, Alec Guinness had a memorable first experience at the theater, though he couldn't recall the production's name. This initial encounter sparked his fascination and eventually led to meeting the cast members. Guinness was a heavy smoker for most of his life, but in his later years, he managed to quit. On the other hand, William Holden's production company, Toluca Productions, only produced one film, Toward the Unknown, before it ceased operations. Despite the different approaches to their careers, both actors left their mark in the movie, which tells a captivating story, engaging audiences with its unique narrative. Russia in 1905, oh, yes. throughout East Asia, we are... Upon its release in 1957, the movie received widespread critical acclaim. Bosley Crowther of the New York Times praised it as a strikingly excellent picture and lauded its tension and suspense. The film also resonated with audiences who found its story of perseverance and survival compelling. The Bridge on the River Kwai received seven Academy Award nominations and won seven awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor. These accolades were significant for those involved in the film as they recognized their hard work and talent. The film's success also helped to establish David Lean as a leading director and Alec Guinness as a versatile actor. The movie's impact extended beyond the film industry. It was seen as a testament to the human spirit's resilience and the power of leadership. The film's iconic score and unforgettable scenes have become etched in the annals of cinema history. The bridge on the river Kwai's legacy continues to this day, with the film remaining a classic of its genre and a must-see for movie enthusiasts. Its enduring appeal is a testament to the film's captivating storytelling and the talent of those involved in its creation. The film's success has left an indelible mark on the world of cinema and will continue to resonate with audiences for generations to come. In the late years of his life, William Holden, one of the lead actors in the movie, struggled with emphysema. As for the casting of Lieutenant Joyce, producer Sam Spiegel initially approached Ben Gazzara, the star of his previous film, The Strange One. However, Gazzara was unavailable, and Cliff Robertson was also considered for the role. Interestingly, the construction of the bridge, which was a significant aspect of the movie, began before any actors had been cast. 
The bridge cost a hefty $250,000 to build, which was a substantial amount of money at the time. The film's production team wanted to ensure that the bridge was built to perfection even before the actors arrived on set. During the filming of the 1957 movie, the sweltering heat in Sri Lanka, where it was shot, posed significant challenges. Alec Guinness, who played Colonel Nicholson, suffered from heat stroke and had to be hospitalized. To keep cool, the cast and crew resorted to unusual measures. They placed blocks of ice inside their shirts and trousers. David Lean, the director, was known for his meticulousness. He demanded authenticity in every detail. For instance, he insisted on using real trains for the movie's iconic bridge blowing scene. This led to a tense moment when a train derailed during filming, almost killing Lean. The local laborers, initially skeptical about the production, became intrigued by the filmmaking process. They started gathering around the set, watching the crew at work. In response, the filmmakers decided to incorporate them into the movie, giving minor roles to some and using others as extras. The bridge, a central prop in the movie, was a massive structure that took several months to build. After filming, the production team decided to destroy it, just like in the movie. However, they hadn't anticipated the impact this would have on the local wildlife. Birds that had made nests in the bridge were left homeless, causing an unexpected environmental issue. Despite these challenges, the movie went on to become a major success, winning seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Director. The bridge on the River Kwai has since then left an indelible mark in cinema history. If we stay here much longer, we'll be up to our necks. In the movie, Andre Morrill, who played Colonel Green, had the distinction of appearing in two Best Picture Academy Award winners this film, and Ben-Hur. Jack Hawkins, who portrayed Major Warden, shared this accomplishment with Morrill. A notable scene in this film features Major Warden interviewing Shears, played by William Holden, on the beach. The camera lens used in this scene, a very short focal length and wide angle, results in a visible curvature to the horizon. This is purely an optical effect. Additionally, Anne Sears, who played an unnamed role, had to dye her hair blonde for this movie. What you just has to do is to go ahead and jump and hope for the best, with or without parachute. The Bridge on the River Kwai, released in 1957, holds a significant place in film history. Winning seven Academy Awards, it set new standards for cinematography and storytelling. This movie, directed by David Lean, is remembered for its exploration of human nature under extreme conditions. The film's innovative use of long takes and panoramic shots influenced future filmmakers. It popularized the idea of using the landscape as an integral part of storytelling, a technique now commonly seen in many films. Moreover, the movie's exploration of themes like duty, honor, and obsession left a profound impact on subsequent works. The film's portrayal of the blurred lines between loyalty and madness inspired many future filmmakers to delve deeper into these themes. Following the success of The Bridge on the River Kwai, a wave of war films emerged, often exploring the psychological impact of conflict on individuals. The movie's influence can be seen in films like Apocalypse Now and Full Metal Jacket, where the protagonists grapple with their sense of duty and morality amidst the chaos of war. In addition, the movie's iconic score by Malcolm Arnold became instantly recognizable and has been referenced in various forms of media ever since. The Bridge on the River Kwai's legacy continues to resonate in the world of film, inspiring filmmakers and audiences alike with its powerful narrative and striking visuals. In Alec Guinness' autobiographical volumes, he shared an incident at the Old Vic where he and artistic director Lawrence Olivier explored a mysterious tunnel. Guinness was known for being cautious in his acting career, regretting that he didn't take enough risks. In contrast, Olivier's eagerness to explore the unknown reflected his bold personality. In the movie, Lieutenant Joyce's character displays a subtle act of courtesy before dismissal. By taking a step back before saluting and turning away, he shows respect to his superior officers, a practice derived from medieval times. This small gesture highlights the power dynamics and etiquette within the military hierarchy. These details, though seemingly minor, add depth to the characters and storyline in the movie, 
making it an engaging watch for the audience by incorporating real-life experiences and historical context. The movie successfully immerses viewers in its world. Preview by surrender. Your shame is their dishonor. It is them who... Alec Guinness's road to stardom began with his storytelling abilities at boarding school, where he kept classmates entertained. His future in-laws were initially opposed to his marriage to their daughter, Marilla, but changed their minds when they learned of his down-to-earth personality, referring to him as a Billy Chapel. In the movie, Guinness plays a pivotal role, demonstrating his acting prowess. Behind the scene, producer Sam Spiegel attempted to cut costs by considering Yugoslavia as a filming location, despite its inability to replicate the required jungle setting. The film's production ultimately required a more fitting location, contributing to its enduring impact on audiences. Did you know that the 1957 movie, The Bridge on the River Kwai, left a significant impact on its audience? We'd love to hear your experiences and memories related to this classic film. How did this movie influence your perspective on cinema? Did it inspire you or teach you something new about resilience and leadership? Share your thoughts with us. Perhaps you were captivated by the exceptional performances of the actors or the intricate storyline. Whatever it may be, we'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to engage with our community by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more cinematic explorations. Let's keep the conversation going and learn from each other's perspectives. So, tell us, what are your favorite moments from the bridge on the River Kwai? And how did they impact you personally? We can't wait to hear your stories. I was down, but I got separated from the other survivors. And your group here? Mostly Aussies, some 